Have you ever had one of those moments of sudden realisation? A time when you suddenly saw things a different way? Well, I had one of those this week. 99, anyone? I was in London this week for a tour around the Globe Theatre with my brother, after which we went for a wander along the river to Borough Market. As we wandered along, past various traders, we walked around the back of an ice cream van and we were enveloped by a cloud of diesel emissions. There was an awful smell, a taste of burnt carbon. It was disgusting. I remember the joy of having an ice cream from a van as a kid. It was a rare treat. For me, there is little that can beat the softness and milkiness of the ice cream and the shot of chocolate as you taste the flake. Lovely. But it's rather ruined if it's going to be covered in partially burnt diesel. How did we ever think it was okay for kids to be exposed to that? When you look back on it, ice cream vans use a strange design. They sit stationary for quite a lot of their time, but they need power to keep their chillers running. So they run the engine almost constantly. It's interesting to see that several London councils have moved to ban diesel ice cream vans from their most busy tourist areas concerned that they are generating too much pollution. And based on my experience the other day, I can certainly see their point. So far, it looks like there are some streets in Camden that disallow them, and Greenwich and Westminster councils have also looked into doing the same. Unfortunately, the media picked up on this story and ran their headlines before the councils had voted, and so far I haven't managed to find what the outcome of those votes actually were but the writing is surely on the wall. If only there was another way to keep ice cream sufficiently cold. Maybe something that could generate energy for us to use as it sat there on a sunny day in the gaps between serving customers. Something that could allow a van like that to do its work nearly silently. Oh well, I guess that's just a pipe dream. That'll never catch on. I would imagine that there aren't an awful lot of ice cream vans in the UK. Making them is probably a fairly small niche enterprise, and a lot of them are kept going for a very long time too. They won't get replaced every three years, as some people like to do with their cars. That means they will be built in very small numbers, and that makes cost of any conversion a problem, as low volume manufacturing is always expensive. But there is at least one company doing it the electric way, well, at least partially. There is a company called Whitby Morrison in Cheshire. They have a couple of different sizes of electric ice cream van systems, built with lithium ion batteries and an inverter, plus rooftop solar to provide a bit of charge too. They currently fit these systems into diesel vans and they can be retrofitted, but it's a step forward even though it's a diesel van. After all, a diesel engine isn't generating pollution when it isn't running, so it seems like a good next step, although hopefully the vans will be fully electrified in the fullness of time. Next time you buy yourself or your family an ice cream at an event, have a look at the van from which you bought it. If it's going to be stationary all day, ask yourself if it should really be sat there with its engine running. What a funny world we live in. Then, hopefully, you might go on to wonder why you sit outside a school, a club or a station waiting to pick up one of your loved ones with the engine of your car running, just so that you stay a comfortable temperature. And wonder, too, why you go out to the car early on a winter's morning to run the engine for a bit to warm up the cabin, trying to avoid the need to defrost the windows. You don't have to do that, you know. There is another way. Electricity is very useful stuff. It doesn't just work well for driving a car down the road. It's useful for heating and cooling the cabin as well, and running the radio or whatever, all of the gadgets you might desire. And no emissions as it's used. It's a very clever system. I don't know about you, but I look forward to a time when we don't have diesel pollution on our streets. It doesn't matter if it's from a car, a van or an HGV, I'll be glad to be free from that horrible smell 
and from the noise. Thanks very much for joining me. Your questions and comments on this subject are most welcome in the section below as ever. If you've liked the video, then it's a help to me if you click the thumbs up button. And it would also help me achieve my stretch goal for the channel if you would consider subscribing as well. Thanks.